So, liebe, liebe, liebe Frau Lamm, uh, uh, dear, dear guests uh, of the British Norman Foundation, um, uh, friends, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I, I have to say which a impressive counter image to these uh, days of confinement and restraint we have, uh, we have uh, gone through. I mean, this is really an uh, I would say, and, and majestic, always, uh, all, all, almost uh, uh, imperial antidote to these days that we uh, hopefully have uh, overcome now. Um, so uh, let me say at the outset how, how delighted I am to be here tonight uh, with you at this uh, lo lovely place. Um, and... Um, uh, celebrating with you not only the end of our confinement, almost, uh, almost the end of our confinement, but also this uh, evening around cultural um, diversity, cultural and societal diversity, uh, books, uh, cartoons that we have seen, uh, music, dance, um, an exhibition and so on. And I think the uh, Naumann Foundation uh, profusely, and in particular Birgit Lum, for inviting me and making all the arrangements for this uh, lovely evening. Uh, but before I briefly touch upon the subject you have asked me to speak about, 70 years of German-Pakistani relation, allow me to say a brief word on the basic idea behind this evening, uh, unity and diversity. Because this is a vintage German political and cultural experience. And to some extent, and that was alluded to by the previous speaker, it's Pakistan's experience too. Both Pakistan and Germany, as we all know, are federal republics. Pakistan of course, is a multi-ethnic state, a fact that is sometimes not sufficiently recognized in Europe. Yes, it is a Muslim state, but we all know how different even face practices under the big tent of the Ummah can be. Germany, on the other hand, is a fairly homogeneous nation, um, However, with a very strong history of regional and sub-regional identities. This diversity, uh, though perhaps different in type and nature, makes not only federal constitutions necessary, both in Pakistan and in Germany, but also cultural differentiation, federalism, even unity in diversity. And there's another interesting parallel, and that brings me to these 70 years of diplomatic relations, whose beginning we are celebrating uh, in, in October this year. Uh, both uh, states, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and the Federal Republic of Germany, were founded within two years of one another. Pakistan in 1947, Germany, I mean, at least the dispensation we all know about, the Federal Republic of Germany, in 49, 1949, both more than 70 years ago. And both these foundations occurred under exceptionally difficult circumstances. Uh, the major reason for this was the fact that both states were born under extreme duress. Germany had started and lost a disastrous war. Pakistan emerged from a traumatic split from India and that millions of refugees had to be integrated by both countries. That is, I would say, a common denominator to have successfully given to these millions who came often with no more than the clothes they wore, a new home is certainly not the least achievement of both countries. 
So, looking back at 70 years, diplomatic relations of two countries, which with certainly a number of differences, share some important features of their political and social DNA, I will briefly, but indeed briefly, and therefore cruising in relatively high altitude, mention five areas of particular achievement, but still ongoing challenges. First, the political sphere, and here we know the relations between Germany and Pakistan have been close and amicable since the very beginning, certainly with some ups and downs, the latter, the latter predominantly during military rule in Pakistan. And that means I'm leaving the COVID uh, restrictions uh, of the last uh, year or so uh, for the moment a bit aside political exchanges across the board, uh, even on highest level, long-standing military to military relation, uh, you, name, you name it. And there are a number of areas where we, on the political field, cooperate currently quite closely, uh, the, moving the um, quite complex Afghan peace process forward is certainly um, and currently one of them. Secondly, the commercial relations, uh, quite strong. Uh, the EU as a whole is Pakistan's most important trade partner and that remains so even after the Brits have left the EU. So the trade uh, volume between Germany and Pakistan hovering around three billion per year, I have to say before the pandemic, uh, is the biggest within the EU. Uh, EU. And the, the interesting fact is that Pakistan, that's very rarely the case with Germany, even has a trade surplus. So Germany, German companies are here, I, I, I will be brief, there are roughly 90 German businesses here, uh, investment portfolio of roughly 350 million, which is a sound foundation, but could certainly be better still. So one of the major tasks of the embassy is to try enticing German companies to come here, engage in trade and investment, and vice versa, facilitate Pakistani business going to Germany participating in trade fairs uh, uh, and clearly uh, COVID permitting still, which is uh, by and large uh, still quite challenging. Third, the development angle. Uh, since the early 60s, Germany has disbursed almost 4 billion euro as development aid to Pakistan with uh, I would say priority areas and climate action and renewable energy, uh, good governance with a big chunk in integrating efforts, um, um, uh, in integrating efforts of uh, bringing the former Fatah areas into KPK, uh, promoting very, very uh, important feature technical and vocational training all across the country, and not least health matters, including special COVID assistance, polio eradication, portable health station, setup of a health insurance system, which is also, I think, very important. Fourth, civil society, and that is, uh, I think, of uh, utmost important civil society plays um, everywhere, but certainly also in Pakistan, a vital, I would even say fundamental role in shaping a modern democratic society. To us, hence, civil society empowerment, commitment to human rights and international humanitarian law, protection of ethnic and religious minorities, um, 
press and media freedom and good responsible government are of paramount importance in shaping our foreign policy relations with other countries, and Pakistan certainly is no exception here. What is to be said here is that we are not only appreciative of the democratic achievement accomplished here since February 2008, as Pakistan returned to democratic to a democratic uh, dispensation. I'm also, uh, since I came, roughly at the same time as uh, Birgit Lum came, I'm very much impressed by the vitality and robustness of political and societal discourse and the resilience of democratic beliefs and convictions. Certainly, there are still bumps in the road areas of constraint and concern on media freedom, human rights violation, ongoing human rights violation, encroachments of security agencies, religious intolerance, restraining the work of national and international NGO, all areas in which we continue to be engaged with Pakistani authorities and partners. In this context, and because we are here so uh, generously invited by the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, let me particularly highlight the significant role our political foundations have played and are playing in this context. Not least the Naumann Foundation, uh, active in Pakistan as far as I know since the mid of the 80s and well reputed. This is not to say that the foundations hadn't faced bureaucratic hurdles and impediments in the meanwhile, they had, but by and large, we have managed to make the foundations work again effectively, I would say, to the benefit of German-Pakistani civil society interaction as to be witnessed here tonight. Fifth and lastly, although perhaps the most important area, the people-to-people -people dimension. The key word here are, and I only can mention them very briefly, cultural exchange schemes, German language and cultural work in Pakistan, um, primarily conducted by the Goethe Institute and in Karachi and the Anna Maria Schimmel House in Lahore, but also by a number of university lecturers quite across the country. On top come roughly 5,000 Pakistani students in Germany and some German students at universities here in Karachi and in Lahore. Indeed, if we want societies to know each other better, even perhaps to cross pollinate and I believe strongly that is the way to go in an increasingly ever closer world, then we have to bring civil society and most notably people themselves into contact and interaction. And that is what we are trying to do for roughly 70 years. Strengthening academic and research exchanges, fostering tourism, making use of the roughly 70,000 Pakistanis living in Germany, mostly as traders and business people, to act as a sort of bridge, encourage mutual trade, interface dialogue, perhaps even marriages, although that is not the, I would say, primarily objective of an embassy, something great minds like Mohammed Iqbal, who lived and studied in Germany, as you know, or the great German Orientalist, Annemarie Schimmel, to icons of Islamic scholarship imbued with the Pakistani-German congeniality um, had in mind when talking about, in the words of Wolfgang von Goethe, a West Eastern Divan. I agree, here again is certainly room for further progress, but we are working on a very broad and sturdy 
basis as we see here tonight, and we certainly need to plan something for the next 70 years. I leave it here now. Excuse, uh, I ask for your uh, apologies, uh, for ask for apologies for my brevity. Express once again my great confidence in um, uh, resilience and vitality uh, of our bilateral relations, now almost for 70 years of life and kicking, and most importantly, thank you for your most kind attention at, at, in, against this uh, lovely and very impressive background. Thank you very much indeed.